Hi guys, it's Ryan here with Absurdity.com. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create your own website from scratch in under 30 minutes, even if you're a beginner. Now you do this with two things. You need a domain name and a hosting provider. Your domain name is simply the URL that your users type into a search bar to find your website, while your hosting provider hosts the files of your website and serves those up to your user's screen when they look you up. I wanna keep this video short and to the point. So with that being said, let's get on over to the screen and I'll show you guys how to make your own website. So to register a domain name, head on over to namecheap.com. The link is in the description below. Go down to the search bar and type in the domain you want for your website. Hit this search feature here and Namecheap will show you a list of domains that are available. It looks like the .com is available for this domain. As you scroll down, you'll notice all these various extensions. You'll see .com, .store, .online. To increase the chance your website will be seen in search results, you want a .com or .net domain as Google seems to give preference to these. Once you've decided on a URL, go up and click on the cart button next to the domain. Now click view cart. You'll be brought to this checkout page. Now scroll down to domain registration area and this is how long you can set the period that you would like to register it for. Keep in mind that it's theorized that Google gives weight to how long a domain is registered for so longer periods could help improve your rankings in search engines meaning more visitors to your site. For now I'm just going to do one year. You can choose to do auto renew or not, doesn't really matter. Namecheap gives you a lot of heads up before your domain is about to expire. So I'm just gonna leave that as off. Make sure that WhoisGuard is enabled. This option hides your personal information like your email and phone number from public view. So people scraping the web can't contact you out of the blue. I made the mistake of not getting this for one of my domains. Now I get about three to five calls a day from website designers marketing agencies and scammers trying to sell the service. So it's entirely worth it to get it. If you scroll down, you'll see a bunch of random stuff. Namecheap has their own hosting, which is cheap, but not as good as the one that I'm gonna be showing you guys, as well as a cheap security down here, an SSL, which is good for ranking higher in search engines, but I'll show you how to get a free one with the hosting that I'll show you next. And a couple other things that you really don't need at this point, so confirm your order. You're gonna have to make an account or sign up with your pre-existing account. I have one made already. Now you're on the checkout page. Go to checkout with PayPal or select other methods if you're using a card. Wait a moment while Namecheap is processing your order. Now you're on the purchase confirmation page. Go on over to manage your domain. This will bring you to your domain management section where you can see all the domains that you bought from Namecheap and you can change the DNS. For now, let's head on over to our hosting. So go to the description below and you'll find a link to this hosting provider called SiteGround. Most of the time you guys are gonna hear Bluehost or HostGator being promoted, but SiteGround is a little bit unknown and much better than both of those. It has an SSD hard drive, which basically just means that it's super fast. So for the same price that you could get HostGator or Bluehost, you're gonna get a faster shared hosting plan on SiteGround. Beyond that, you're also gonna get a free HTTPS when you sign up with SiteGround, which is a great trust signal with your visitors, as well as helps to increase your rankings in the search engines. Let's head on over to web hosting and then go to shared hosting plans. Click that. You'll see a variety of different packages that you can choose here. I recommend going for the middle one here, which will allow for multiple different websites to be hosted on one hosting account. It's the best in terms of money. Keep in mind this price is one you're paying yearly, not monthly. So go ahead and choose one of these plans that suits you. Now you have the option of either registering a new domain for free or you already have a domain. You might be asking why didn't we use the free domain that we get with SiteGround? It's because it doesn't come with a who is guard that you get with Namecheap, so it ends up being more money in the long run. Now type in your domain here, then click proceed. Here just put in all your information and scroll down to the hosting services area and you can see you can change this to either trial for one month or you can do 12 months. I suggest doing a 12 months option here. 
So keep in mind that you're now going to be paying $71 in total. Scroll down further, you'll see the website file transfer free that comes with it, SSL that comes with it as well, and then you also get a site scanner if you want to. I'm going to check that off. Go to pay now and finish the process. I've already paid for my hosting, so I'm not going to do this here. Once you've completed your order for SiteGround, go back to your email and then you'll get an email from SiteGround that gives you your login and then this login button. Click this button to send you over to a login area here. Put in your credentials and then click sign in and you'll be taken to what is known as the dashboard area. Click on the My Accounts tab. You should see already your domain in this area right here that you registered with. Um, I will have to add mine on here so how I do that is by going to the cPanel area. Now there's a lot to the cPanel area if you're not used to seeing this but uh, for now I'll just show you what you need to know. Go on over to add on domains. By the way you're probably not going to have to do this for your first domain but whenever you buy a new one add on a domain in the cPanel area. Type in your new domain name and then type in an arbitrary password. Then click add domain. Okay, click to go back here and then click home, my accounts. Click the information and settings tab here. This right here is your account and DNS. This is what we're going to be using to point back to your domain. So head back on over to Namecheap into your management dashboard here that you left open. Go down to your domain name and click this little house and then go to manage. You'll come to a page like this, scroll down to the name server area, click the down button here, go to custom DNS. Now these are where you're going to copy and paste your name servers. Go back to SiteGround. Copy the first name server right here, just the letters. Paste that in the top. Then click the check mark here. You'll notice it'll take about 90 seconds for this switch to occur. Give it a little bit of time. It says up to 48 hours, but it generally doesn't take that long. Now head on back to SiteGround Dashboard. Now let's head on back to the cPanel once more and we're finally going to install WordPress. That's what we're going to be building our website on. Most websites on the web nowadays are built off of WordPress so this is a good start for anyone. Click on this. You'll be taken to the install page. Scroll down and do install now. Choose your protocol. Since we automatically get a HTTPS, we can use that. Go to your domain right here and choose the domain that you just added. You'll probably only have one if it's your first one. Click that. Scroll down and change your site name to whatever you want it to be. And your site description. And as you scroll down, you'll see admin account information. This is your username and password. This is how you're going to log into it. Keep scrolling down. Make sure your language is correct. Don't worry about any of this. Don't worry about your theme yet. And don't worry about advanced options. Click install. Should take a little bit to fully install this. All right, congratulations. You officially disinstalled WordPress on your hosting account. Right here is the URL that people can use to find your website. And this is the URL that you'll be using to actually make edits to your website. So click through to this. You may first see a security warning. If you do, click the advance and proceed anyways button. That will bring you to here, which is a 404. We're sorry the page is not found. You'll find this a lot of times because it may take up to 24 hours for your site to actually be usable and editable. So just be patient and come back to it. I usually go away for about 10 minutes and come back. Okay, our WordPress website is installed and ready to go. 
If you need the password, you can get that in an email. That should be sent to you from SiteGround. Now we're on the dashboard here. Head on over to Settings and then go down to Permalinks. Change your permalinks to post name. This will change the URL of your site pages and posts to something descriptive that you can set yourself. Go down to Save Changes, then go up to Users and your profile. Scroll all the way down and generate a new password so you can remember what your password is. Confirm the use of a weak password if it is weak and then update profile. Now head on over to plugins. You should have two plugins automatically downloaded. Quickly go to Hello Dolly and delete that since it's useless. Then activate AskMit anti-spam. This will allow you to control the comments that are allowed on your website. Go to add new. Add in W3 total cache, install this one here, and then activate. For the sake of speed, I'm just going to go ahead and install the other ones, follow along, and in the end, I'll explain why we're installing these plugins. All right, I'll quickly explain why we chose to install these plugins. First, we have Elementor. Elementor is a visual page builder, which makes it really easy to design your own custom websites. We got Google XML sitemaps, which automatically generates a sitemap, which basically displays the structure of your site. And you can take this, submit it to Google, and it looks good for your search rankings and helps you get more visitors to your site. Then we have W3 Total Cache which is meant to decrease the loading times of all your pages. This is also great for your rankings and search engines. And then the classic plugin called Yoast SEO, which will allow you to set meta titles, meta descriptions, and basically just judge how well your website is optimized for keywords. Hover over the performance tab right here, then go up to general settings. Toggle all caching types on or off at once save and purge caches. So what we did is just turned everything on total cache on at once. There's a lot more you can do customly, but this makes it easy. Now head on over to appearance. We're gonna be adding on a theme, add new, and there are hundreds of thousands of themes that you can choose from. Featured, popular, latest, favorites, everything you can think of here for featured filters. My site is going to be based around e-commerce, so switch to e-commerce and apply that filter. Let's scroll down the list a little bit here. This drift one looks like a good one for me, so I'm going to install, then activate. You can also live preview, but this one looks good already. Now click on this house button over here to send yourself to your website, and there you go. You got your first website all set up. And you can customize your home page by using this customize button here. You can edit various options such as your theme options. These will change depending on what theme you have. And then your basic options like site identity for logo, your header, your footers, your colors, background image, etc. whatever you need. Exit out of this. Click on the name of your store once more to send you back to your dashboard. Go to your pages area, add new page. Label this home and then publish. Edit with Elementor. And this will bring you to the Elementor Visual Builder section where you can easily build your home pages, inner pages, blog posts, etc.